Welcome to the show, guys. Got an exciting one here for you. We're talking about three wide receivers I love for Fantasy Football 2022. A quick one for you, fun, informative, and you're going to love these wide receivers as well once I explain who they are and why I love them for this season. Now, it's a good episode here today because I like focusing on wide receivers later. Okay, You got to understand that. When we're talking Fantasy Football draft strategy, you're going robust early. You're securing that scarce position and you're loading up on wide receivers. I got to tell you, there's a ton of value here this year at wide receiver where you can wait on wide receiver and get yourself a top five, top 10 wide receiver and not have to pay in the first one or two rounds. So very important episode, guys, especially with the two guys I love here because they're in prime position to succeed this year and you want to target them. You want to put them on your radar here for immense value. All right, guys, going to dive into this episode. I'm going to do a quick story time here. I got a good story here for you as well i i don't know if you guys follow make sure you guys are following on instagram at fantasy football counselor if you are new to the channel and you're just watching this and this came up on your news feed make sure you guys click subscribe because this is the biggest fantasy football channel out there the most realistic and guys listen i'm telling you i give you practical advice it's actually going to help you win no cookie cutter every other channel is cookie cutter bs this is actually going to help you win so here's a story i was basically on my instagram i did a post because i saw a picture of kyler murray and Hollywood Brown gambling, and they were smoking. It was a cigar, and I just, you know, I, I do some jokes, but I want these guys in line for the season. I look at Derrick Henry. He's out there crushing it, and these guys are out there doing, like Juju. He's in the Chiefs jersey dancing now, doing TikToks, ridiculous, acting like a 12-year-old, and then you've got Kyler Murray and Hollywood Brown basically gambling and smoking, and I, and I basically did a video saying, hey, this is ridiculous. People tagged Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown came back and commented back on the post. I'm going to tell you exactly what he said here. Now, again, when we're talking story time, I share stories because, again, I get a lot of interaction from real NFL players that have ego issues that can't take some positive criticism or any criticism at all for that matter he goes if you wanted attention just say that didn't know i couldn't celebrate my birthday with my bros and prop a cigar uh and prop cigar yeah watch my story nice you on my page we work in every day so he basically saying that he's working he's grinding so there's some fantasy information for you he's saying that he's gonna have a good season he's working and training with Kyler murray i see them gambling and smoking according to instagram I'm just pointing it out. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to control anyone's life. I'm just saying, guys, be out there grinding. And apparently it was his birthday. Either way, I'm like, great, that's fine. I'm just trying to keep you in line. And some people are in the comments saying, well, Joe, why aren't you mean to him? Why aren't you, you know, you know, telling him off? I'm like, I'm not here to tell players off. I'm just here. If I see them doing some extracurricular activity that doesn't line up with them being really successful, I'm going to highlight it, right? We saw Najee in the summer you know, or not in the summer, a month ago, uh, you know, in Mexico drinking, zooming in on girls in Mexico with pictures and stuff. I'm going to highlight that. You know, Jerry Judy's doing a modeling shoot. He came on, DM'd me after. He's like, oh, yeah, talking hate. It is what it is, guys. So I just call it how it is. These players obviously seeing what I'm saying because I don't do what everyone else does, and they're, and they're chiming in. Uh, I just think it's funny, guys. A lot of it is for your entertainment. Some people take it seriously, Some, you know, players particularly, but we're just having fun, all right, guys? So if you aren't following Instagram, make sure you guys follow a lot of crazy stuff there at Fantasy Football Counselor. Now, also, guys, get the 16-round draft solution. I've linked it here below. If you haven't got it, this is the Game Changer. Sleepers, breakouts, video training, optimal players are drafted in each round. Everything to crush your leagues. Magazines are dead. Cheat sheets are dead. Draft kits are dead. This is the solution Get it, guys. Once you once you log in, right? Once you get 16 rounds, you get a login, and you get access to everything, including full mock drafts, all the notes, everything you need. Optimal players get 16 rounds at thefantasyfootballcounts.com. All right, let's dive into these three wide receivers again. If you are new to the channel, subscribe and drop a receiver that you love. Let's make it interactive. The first guy I absolutely love, guys. Very simple. Now this is the only guy I love early now kind of like Stefan Diggs in the second round as well but the guy I absolutely love is Jamar Chase am I spending a first round pick on Jamar Chase late first round early second probably not but I'll tell you why I love him youth very young right Cooper Cup had his pinnacle year last year he's no he's no young guy Cooper Cup is now going into his what sixth season so it's not like hey I just discovered Cooper Cup he's been at it for six years he had a pinnacle year last year he's coming down okay guys like Debo Samuel New quarterback, new situation, Waller's there, Renfro's there, decline imminent. He's not going to get 169 targets that he got last year. I don't love him. But the guy I still see getting a ton of ceiling, Debo Samuel, by the way. Don't like him either. 
you know, eight eight rushing touchdowns, contract issues. Jefferson's got Thielen. Jamar Chase, I know he's got Higgins there, but listen, 128 targets last year, 1,455 yards, 13 touchdowns. I still think there's more to be had. When you look at his target count and put it in perspective to, to Cooper Cup, 191 targets compared to 128. Jamar Chase finished fifth. Cooper Cup finished first. Now, again, Cooper Cup had this astronomical year, so there's a big gap in fantasy points, 304 to 439. But Jamar Chase still finished top five amongst wide receivers with only 128 targets. If you want to get a little bit more of a comparison, Adams had 169 targets, had 344 points compared to the 128 targets and 304 points with Jamar Chase. Now, Jamar Chase, again, young, talented, Burrow, connection, more ceiling to be had, makes amazing Amazing catches. This guy's arguably, I think, the best wide receiver in the game. Jamar Chase only has more ceiling, but the question is, are you drafting him? If you do need a wide receiver, if you want a wide receiver early on, Jamar Chase, I think, is the guy I feel the most safe with this season. I still think there's more ceiling to be had. Guys like Adams, Tyree Kill, new new situations, Debo Samuel, contract deal, year, you know, coming off the pinnacle year there with the touchdowns, and you got Cooper Cup, pinnacle year, regression definitely happening. So when you look at it from a, I still got more room to grow, it's going to be Jamar Chase. All right, guys? Let's talk about the second wide receiver I love. Two rookies here. Again, great value on these guys. And I just love the opportunity, love the talent, love the situation. Second guy here that I absolutely love here at wide receiver. Now, you can call him a fantasy football wide receiver sleeper. But the guy on top was Drake London. The guy is 6'5", 210 pounds. They've got nobody on the depth chart in Atlanta. I'm looking at their depth chart. They got Brian Edwards. They got Zacchaeus, who I call the Zucchini. They've got nobody. They've got Kyle Pitts, who I think takes a step up this year, but he's a tight end. When we look at the wide receiver position, they've got nobody. The only knock I've got to this situation, and I get Drake London drafted, you know, first round by the Atlanta Falcons, okay? Very strong receiver. The only debate I have with him right now, the only thing I'm concerned about is the fact that Mariota's throwing the ball. Now, Mariota does have a good deep ball, but he hasn't started for a while. So, again, Mariota... A little suspect for me. They've got Desmond Ritter, the rookie, who could shine as well. But again, Mariota is a guy that I think could make him really relevant. But again, with with Drake London, we're looking at the volume. The volume is going to be there, and you can get this guy, you know, fifth round and beyond. You know, he had over a thousand yards receiving in his in his last rookie year, seven touchdowns, eighty eight receptions. Again, very strong, very confident receiver, and in a prime position to succeed. A guy people will be talking about next year, but you've already got him this year. Now, do, is he going to be your wide receiver one on your team? Not necessarily, but you get him as your wide receiver two. You load up on a bunch of wide receivers that could break out, and you've plugged in that wide receiver one spot on your team, wide receiver two, with potential wide receiver ones and not pay that price. Now, again, there's so much value at wide receiver. Christian Kirk's a wide receiver one. You get him for a steal later, right? There's so many guys that are wide receiver ones that you can get for value, all right, guys? So, again, Drake London, absolute steal. Love him this year. Great talent, opportunity, volume. It, could he bust? Possibly, but, again, I'm not paying a second, third, fourth round pick. I get him later, and I'm potentially getting a wide receiver one, guys. Absolute steal. Drake London, opportunity to succeed. Again, Mariota is kind of the big question mark there, but volume was volume and talent is key, and he is talented. They're going to use him. There's no competition there at wide receiver. Volume, 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 talent. All right, and the third guy here, he's an absolute steal. Sitting, I don't know where he's sitting. I think like, like I'm gonna pull this up here on the consensus rankings actually here, because it's he's like a hundredth. I don't know if he's a hundredth, but he's he's pretty down. I think he's like seventieth on the consensus rankings. All right, the guy I'm talking about is Christian Watson. I love Christian Watson. I'm just trying to pull up where he is on the consensus on the con- sheepsis rankings. He's sixty fourth. On the consensus rankings, Christian Watson is and potentially could be the wide receiver one on the Green Bay Packers. The only knock I have to him is sometimes Aaron Rodgers likes veteran wide receivers or wide receivers he's got that rapport with that he only starts feeding him. So if Christian Watson catches on, if Christian Watson does perform well in practice, OTAs, builds that connection with Rodgers, we are looking at a guy that could absolutely take off the season. Now, there's talk about Alan Lazard as well being the one, but he's had years to wow us. We're not wow. Christian Watson, when you look at him, 6'4", 208 pounds out of North Dakota. Um, You know, he was the first wide receiver picked by the Packers, okay? I think he was picked off, you know, he was a third, sorry, he was a third pick for them in the second round. I love Christian Watson. Again, 169 freed up targets with Adams gone. Young, talented. Guys, I'm telling you, he can get the deep ball. He can get those red zone targets and the opportunities there. Now, there's a sleeper there, Romeo Dobbs as well, that was picked up in the fourth round. 
it's one of those situations similar with the Chiefs. They've got, you know, Justin Ross, the rookie. They've got Sky Moore. They've got Nicole Hardman, Juju. There isn't a clear-cut wide receiver one. Similar situation here with the Packers. But all I'm saying is Christian Watson's a steal in drafts. I love the opportunity. I love the, the situation that he's in. If he busts, so be it. I don't care because I get him as my, like, wide receiver 4-5 as an absolute steal with a potential to really thrive. Okay, guys? This is about opportunity. This is about Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball. He's not just going to any old team. He is going to Aaron Rodgers, who doesn't have Adams, and there's a void there, and there's no true wide receiver one. Again, Lazard could be a good guy. You know, he could be solid, but again, you have to pay higher for Alan Lazard. He's sitting 48th on the consensus, you know, compared to Watson, who's sitting 64th. Okay. I'm all over this. I'm just going to stash him. I'm going to I'm going to take him on my bench. I'm going to stash him. I'm going to hope for a breakout. I'm going to watch the situation closely. I'm a, I'm an investor and I'm banking on upside here based on opportunity. He can totally bust. Rodgers could just pump it to Lazard and Robert Tunyon all season and, and Aaron Jones and Watson becomes an, an accessory. I don't care. I'm stashing him. I like the opportunity. Love the volume potential and I'm going to stash him. So there's three wide receivers I love. Jamar Chase a little higher. Um, you know, talent opportunity more ceiling to be had then you've got you know drake london great opportunity good talent out of college viable option wide receiver one plug and play and then you got christian watson who could take the wide receiver one spot with aaron Rodgers throwing the ball love these wide receivers guys and again there's a ton more wide receivers i love and i explained all that in the 16 round draft so you do not invest early on a wide receiver load up on those running backs early get the wide receivers later and stack a bunch of them they're gonna go off guys you're gonna get two or three that are gonna go off in a good, and you got to make sure you select the right people because they got to be in a good position to succeed. Okay, you don't, don't just draft any old wide receiver, right? There's a ton of other wide receivers that came out of the draft aren't in a good position. Like Garrett Wilson could have a good year, but he's on the Jets. They've got a lot of more there. Do I trust him as much? Not really. I don't see the situation as nice for a guy like Garrett Wilson as I do with a Christian Watson. So you got to start thinking and look at those positions in those depth charts. All right, guys, if you are new to the channel, subscribe. Get 16 rounds. Use code 220. That'll help you guys crush your leagues. And we're going full force fantasy football 2022. Let's get it, guys. Subscribe. I'm pumped. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Stash these guys. I'm out.